Hi, this is Ajith here. In this video, we are going to discuss class hydrozoa of phylum Nidaria. The class hydrozoa comprise of a highly diverse group of Nidarians in which the life cycle may include polyforms, mediceforms or sometimes both the forms. The hydrozoa include solitary or colonial Nidarians which may be sedentary or free swimming. They exhibit tetramerous or polymerous radial symmetry. Many hydrosovans exhibit a regular alternation of generation that is polyp and medisoid forms alternate in the life cycle of an organism. The medisa form is found to possess a true velum and the body wall has two cellular layers with a middle non-cellular mesoglia and outer layer of horny non-cellular perisarch secreted by the ectoderm. About 3000 species have been described so far. The common examples are Hydra, Obelia, Physalia and so on. In this video we will discuss Obelia. Obelia is a marine colonial hydrosoven and it exists in two alternating forms, the polyp and the medusa form. The polyform is sedentary and remains attached to the surface of seaweeds and other substrata that are found in shallow waters while the medusa form is a free swimming form and it is a solitary form. In Obelia, the polyform is a asexual phase and the medisoid form represents the sexual phase. The life cycle involves an alternation between two phases or generation that is it shows metagenesis or alternation of generation. Now we will see about the Obelia colony. First of all we will look into the hydroid or the polyp phase. The polyp phase of Obelia is a colonial form and it is highly branched and filament like structure that remains attached to a solid substratum. The colony shows polymorphism that is a number of individuals or suits are present in a colony and these suits are morphologically as well as functionally different from each other. Each polyp has a cylindrical body attached to the hydrocolus with its proximal end and free at its distal end. The obelia colony is formed of two portions. The horizontal portion is called the hydrorhiza and the vertical portion bearing the suits are named as hydrocolus. Hydrorhiza is a branch structure that gives mechanical anchorage to the whole colony. Hydrorhiza gives rise to vertical hydrocolus and this hydrocolus has short lateral alternate branches bearing suits at its ends. The hydrocolus has two types of suits. The gastrosuits having a nutritive function and the blastostyle which is having a reproductive function. In addition to the fully formed gastrosuits and blastocyte, the lateral branches were short club like structures which are either primordial or developing gastrosuits or blastostyle. Both the hydrorhiza and the hydrocolus consists of hollow tubes called sinosarc covered externally with a chitinous perisarc. A sinosarc is made of two cellular layers. The outer one is designated as ectoderm and the inner layer is called endoderm. In between the two layers, there is a thin layer of mesoglea. Sinosarc contains a tubular cavity known as the cylindron, which is continuous throughout the colony and is filled with a fluid. Obelia possess nidocytes that contain nematocysts. The tentacles of Obelia are solid and contains a core of endoderm cells. The perisarc or periderm is a cuticle like transparent non cellular layer secreted by the ectoderm of the sinosarc. The perisarc is separated from the sinosarc at certain places and it shows attachment with the sinosarc and the constrictions can be seen because of this attachment and the constrictions are called anali of perisarc or periderm. Now we are moving on to the hydrants or the gastrosuits. It is also called trophozoid or the nutritive suit. Most of the suit present in the hydroid stage of obelia are the gastrosuits. They are specially designed to perform nutritive function and feed the whole colony. Each gastrosuite has a short tube-like body having at its distal end 
a conical projection called hypostome or manubrium. The mouth is situated at the terminal end of the manubrium. Surrounding the manubrium, there is a circlet of about 24 solid tentacles. This suet is enveloped by a vase like investment called hydrotheca. This hydrotheca is formed by the modification of the perisarch and is absolutely transparent. It is provided with a circular shelf at its proximal end upon which the whole suet rests. The circular shell has a central aperture through which the tubular body of the suet remains continuous with the rest of the colony. Now we will move on to the blastocystai or gonosuites or reproductive suet. This particular type of suits are few in number in comparison to the number of gastrozoites. Each blaster style has a long cylindrical body without mouth and tentacles. The cylindron here is greatly reduced. It is enclosed by a transparent covering called gonotheca. It is a modified form of perisarch. The lateral walls of the body gives off small lateral buds called medusa buds. The mature medusa buds finds their way out after rupturing the gonotheca. Now we will discuss the medusoid phase. Here the medusa develops from the blastostyle. The fully formed medusa assumes the appearance of an umbrella with a convex surface by which the medusa was attached with the blastostyle. This convex side is called X umbrella and the concave side is known as the sub umbrella. From the center of the sub umbrella surface emerges a hanging tube called manubrium bearing a square shaped mouth at its terminal end. The edge of the umbrella gives rise to a very short circular shelf called velum. At the junction of the umbrella side and the velum there is a circlet of tentacles. At the base of alternate tentacles there lies a sense organ called the lithocyst or marginal sense organ. Each lithocyst has a very small spherical sac like body that encloses a central calcareous mass and sensory cells. These sensory organs regulate and coordinate the movement of the medusa. The mouth leads into the cylindron lodged inside the manubrium and from the base of the cylindron originates four radial canals which ultimately open into a ring which is called the ring canal situated at the margin of the body of the umbrella. The food is conveyed to the different parts of the body through these canals. It may be noted that the whole organization of the body of the medusa exhibits a radial symmetry. Moving on to the reproduction and development. The medusae are unisexual or dioecious. Unisexual simply means sexes are separate. That is the organism represent only one sex that is a male or a female. Gonads are ectodermal in origin and remains in close association with the radial canals towards the subumbrella surface. They are round in appearance and are four in number. Both the males and female gonads are similar externally. The mature male gametes or spermatozoa are liberated into water and one spermatozoon fertilizes a female gamete or ovum and thus results in the formation of a zygote. The single cell zygote divides repeatedly and the daughter cells reorganize to form stages like blastula and gastrula. Finally, a larval form will emerge called the planula larvae. Now we will move on to the details of the planula larvae. The free swimming planula larvae has a elongated and ovoid appearance. The anterior end of the planula is broader than the posterior end. The outer surface of the larvae is composed of ciliated ectodermal cells and the inner layer is the endoderm. Mouth is absent in this larvae. After a brief period of free swimming existence, the planula larvae settles down and fixes itself to the substratum by one pole and transforms into the next stage, the hydrula stage. Again, we will see the hydrula stage in detail. It should be noted that the fixed end of this hydrula stage is designated as the abhorrent 
and the free end as the orland. The orland develops a manubrium and a circle of tentacles. Then a mouth breaks open at the center of the manubrium. The hydrilla thus formed gives out lateral buds and transforms into a obedia colony and thus exhibits a typical instance of metagenesis or alternation of generation. Now we will see metagenesis in obelia in detail. In the life cycle of obelia, there is a regular alternation between a, a sexual hydroid stage and a sexual medusoid stage. The obelia colony represents the hydroid stage or sexual stage as we have discussed earlier, which produces medusa buds by budding. These medusa buds subsequently transforms into fully fledged medusae. The medusae represents the sexual stage and possess male and female gonads. The male and female gametes are produced in the respective male and female gonads. The male and female gametes unite producing a zygote which in turn passes through the larval forms and develop into an obelia colony. Thus, in the life cycle of obelia, there is a distinct alternation of two generation or metagenesis. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe and share.